Project Sekai's third anniversary came with a lot of things to be excited about, and one of the biggest things for me was the fact that everyone got a new design alongside their advancement into the next high school year. If you've seen any of my videos, you probably already know how much I like discussing character design, and I wanted to take the time today to compare the cast's new and old looks. We're gonna go down the list, starting with who else? Leonid. Right off the bat, the girls' new outfits looks way more professional. The consistent gray jackets with splashes of their colors looks much more properly put together and like a real unit versus their old designs, which ended up looking disjointed due to them all having such different colors and silhouettes. I'd say for the group, this is clearly an upgrade. But let's also take the time to go over each member individually, starting with Ichika. Now this might be a little contradictory, but while I stand by the idea this is a good upgrade for looking more professional, I do also think it's less interesting than her OG design. The rolled up sleeves and jacket tied around her waist gave her a very distinct and cool look, successfully showing off her designated blue color without it feeling like it clashed with any of her friends due to the white and black elements taking precedence in the design. I think the one suspender and necktie tied around her wrist added to the cool vibe she gave off, and they were smart additions since the suspender hides the fact she doesn't actually have a guitar strap and the necktie on her wrist makes her strumming hand feel more important. Her new design, in general, is a lot more symmetrical and safe, which makes her look a lot less dynamic. Saki fares much better, I think. I never really felt the cut of her original jacket was doing anything special, and the skirt feels needlessly complicated to me, with a lot of layers and hanging bits that really just end up making your eyes unfocus, and usually you can't even see it anyway behind her keyboard. Giving her a jacket with extra wide sleeves and swapping the necktie for a bow plays into how cute Saki is far better, and she's still wearing these huge platform shoes, which is such a fun element to her design that no one else really has. Looking at Hanami, the first thing I want to mention is that I'm glad they found a way to let her pose with her instrument too, giving her a snare drum to stand next to. Overall, this art also conveys Hanami's personality way better too. The original image for her, having her in this stance, makes Hanami look very cool and confident. And she really isn't either of those things. <laughs> now, actually focusing on the outfit, I find myself a bit torn. Similar to Ichika, I feel this is less dynamic for Hanami. Specifically, I quite liked the short puffy sleeves and hood of her original jacket. Emphasizing her arms like that makes sure that she didn't get lost behind her full drum set. However, I prefer the girls all having unity now that they're really taking being a band seriously, which dictates she needs long sleeves like the others. And this gray color is a lot less abrasive on the eyes. I don't think I could say either is better or worse in this case. Shio, however, is a huge upgrade! I've made it no secret how much I dislike Shio's original design. This shade of green is hideous. The purple elements clashes with everything on her and the rest of the band. The hidden socks makes her look goofy. Shio's new design fixes all that while also giving her some star accessories to have her actually match the band's theme. As an aside, I also always thought that the fact that she tied a necktie into a bow is both an interesting character element, but also felt like she was trying too hard to be different, especially since wearing the necktie properly not only looks much better on her, but also feels more in line with her general fashion sense and personality. And similar to Hanami, I like that this new art has her posing with the base down to her side as opposed to having her holding it up like this. It always made her PNG way taller than the others and hard to work with when making videos. The humans aren't the only ones who got new looks though, so did the Vocaloids, so let's explore them too. Let's start with Miku. So, her original look for the Sekai was sort of just an extra fancy version of the girls' uniforms, and it worked really well with the pleats and belts and the giant safety pins. Miku feels like the cool senpai. Her new design looks a lot more casual. If I had to describe it, I'd say Miku went from being cool senpai to the graduate who still bums around school during lunch break. I guess I just don't understand what they were going for. They've toned down on the details a lot, making her look significantly less special or important. I hate to say it, but I think this is our first downgrade of the video. But what about Luka? Well, similar to Miku, her original design went about giving her a cool senpai vibe. And also similar to Miku, they dialed back on all the cute elements that went into that for the new look. I will say Luka's jacket feels a lot less casual than Miku's. If Miku is the grad still hanging around the high school, Luka's the graduate who's gone off to college. She still looks important, which is nice, but she does also end up giving the impression she's become distant from the kids, since she and Miku seem to have gone out of their way to no longer match Leo needs designs. 
So yeah, I still think all the girls look much better going into the game's third year, if perhaps also quite a bit less dynamic. And I can't deny that it feels a bit like they didn't know what to do with the virtual singers. It's nice seeing the girls unify their looks more as they have rekindled their friendship. Moving forward, I think I'd like to see the girls shift into looking more cool, for lack of a better word. Their new uniforms are sort of giving marching band, which I don't think was the intention. I'd just like to see them make the jump from high schoolers to rock stars. Dude, I got you a friendship bracelet. Nice! Put it on me! <laughs> Now let's shift to the next group, More More Jump. Similar to Leonid, the idols feature a uniform in their designs as well. However, with the move into the new year, they've all shifted from wearing black and white designs featuring their specific color to all of them wearing white and blue with a small hint of their unique color featured. I wandered back and forth quite a bit on how I felt about this. I do like that they feel more like a real unit now, as the mismatched colors ended up looking a little too disjointed and costumey. However, I can't shake that I don't love how the predominantly blue color makes Airi and Minori feel like they don't belong, while also making Shizuku and Haruka feel monotone and flat. Let's look at each member individually before I make any outright better or worse claims for the group. Minori's orange looks really nice with this blue, which makes sense, they're complementary colors, and I like that they've opted to tone down the saturation of the orange quite a bit. This peachy color looks much nicer than the brighter orange of her last design. Across the board, the girls are wearing their uniforms more properly this time around. There was some variety with shirt length and keeping the jacket part buttoned or not last time, and I gotta say, it's a bit disappointing missing out on those little details that make a strict uniform like this shine. It makes sense that Minori would do her best to wear her outfit properly, like the real idol she wants to be so bad, but also I think it would have been delightful to see her bad luck appear somewhere on the design. Perhaps her bottom two buttons could always find themselves coming undone. In contrast to Minori, losing the saturation for Haruka's blue feels like a huge misstep to me. It gets totally lost in the uniform color and makes it look like this shade of blue was intended to just be for Haruka. Haruka's skirt is symmetrical versus Minori's which favored her right side, which adds to this vibe. Honestly, Haruka's the only one who gets to be symmetrical, which makes her look like she's supposed to be the intended center, which isn't terrible, she is the biggest member of the team in terms of in-universe population but also, Minori's our protagonist here. It's just kind of weird to have not the main character be given all the elements that convey being this important. First things first with Irie, look at the PNG of her model I got off of the wiki. Her cuffs, like, aren't layered right, yeah? I don't think they should be clipping through her wrists like that. Anyway, Irie's the only one who's been allowed to change up the cut of her design so she can continue to expose her midriff, and I think it looks a lot less well done here. The cut of the previous designs, featuring the short jackets to begin with, meant she could show off her tummy like this without disrupting the general shape of the uniform. Now, it just looks like they ran out of fabric while making Irie's shirt, definitely not helped by the fact the skirts sit higher up on their waists now. I haven't discussed the idol's new hair accessories because I hadn't felt they were anything too special to note so far, but I do want to say that I think the new bows for Irie are way cuter than her old ones. And finally, we've got Shizuku, whose design is really just less important looking Haruka. Their designs are the most similar across the team, even down to Shizuku's teal becoming invisible on the blue of the uniform. It feels like there's nothing to say here. It's Haruka's look again, but less symmetrical. Which is a shame, I feel like they could have been playing with Shizuku's simultaneously elegant yet airheaded personality in some way way here. Let's break away from the real girls for a second and switch over to the Vocaloids, because they are fascinating for the Sekai. Previously, Miku and Rin were designed to have extra done-up versions of the same outfit as the real girls, similar to how we saw with Leonid. And also similar to Leonid, they seem to have shifted away from that for this new wave of looks. Miku's new design... Let's be frank, it's stunning. The separated sleeves, the flower detailing and beadwork in the skirt, these adorable shoes, I want a scale figure of this. It doesn't look good with more and more jump though. These fades to gray specifically really make her look like a stranger when standing with the kids, and this pink isn't working that well either. I believe the idea was for it to help connect Miku to the warm colors of Irie and Minori in some way, but it just being a sheet of color on one hip doesn't work as well as it did when the color was on her buttons. Just looking at the Mikus alone, this is a clear enhancement, but it does blow that she really doesn't look like she belongs with the group anymore. Rin is 
similar. She has the same stunning new design elements as Miku, and the blue pieces connect her to Shizuku and Haruka on the team. But also, similar to Miku, this makes her look like she's in a different idol unit from the human girls. I do feel between the two, Rin looks better alongside Mormo Jump. It helps that she has a lot less of that gray on her design, and that this blue accent pairs well with the idol's new uniform color. I definitely like this new look for her better. Hell, these two might be my favorite new designs we've got. But I do also still think it's a bummer to lose that cohesion with the team. Alright, now that we've looked at everyone, I get that the more more jump section here ended up being quite a bit more negative. And yeah, I think I do consider these new designs for the group an overall downgrade. The virtual singers look like goddesses, and I find myself wishing the real girls got fits more similar to them. The idol's original designs always felt quite messy to me. The skirts especially have a lot of noise and layers, but I think I prefer that over these bland, shapeless dresses they're stuck in now. And I do think this uniform blue color is a mistake. I don't mind them matching with minor accents of their colors, the problem is that they're all stuck in Haruka's color. I think they should have been wearing green, referencing not only their unit color on a meta level, but also referencing the clover theme they have in universe. Here's hoping next time they get new designs, we also get a little bit more personality in how they dress again too. I'm washing me in my clothes. Okay, that's enough negativity because I'm gonna spoil it right now, Vivid Bad Squad has gotten the best glow-ups in the game, and we've finally got a group that doesn't wear a uniform to discuss too. In general, I'd say the squad are just wearing different cool street clothes, but I do also find that the new fits help them look a little bit more professional as well. A little bit less kids wearing hoodies, and a little bit more adults looking fashionable. <laughs> Kohane has really lucked out. Both of her designs are hyper cute. While I will miss the oversized Letterman's jacket, I do think her new fit displays how much she's become familiar with street fashion and its music over the game's lifetime. While still quite hip, the OG design looked a lot more safe. Remove the jacket, and it's a pretty standard outfit. While still being cute, her new design, with the suspenders and more elaborate skirt, shows how comfortable Kohane has become in the fashion-savvy world of hip-hop. While she's clearly not as ingrained in this world as someone like An, she doesn't look as much like a newbie anymore, which is swell. Speaking of On, the Aunt Nagi vibes has been pushed front and center, which makes sense. The way the story has gone, it's clear why On has gone out of her way to emulate the woman who has inspired her so much. Honestly, On is another one who has always looked great across both designs. I really liked her shorts, but also this new fit looks less costumey than her previous one did, with all the pieces of it matching just a bit too well to feel authentic. The off-the-shoulder sleeves and cropped cut really gives On a more mature vibe, too, working well with the fact that the squid Squid? <laughs> Working well with the fact that the squad aren't just gonna be those high schoolers chasing a dream forever. Looking towards Akito, I'm just glad we don't gotta clown on this man for wearing three shirts anymore. I get the intention was for it to look casual, but it just ended up feeling confused, like Akito was never sure how warm or cold it was gonna be outside. Not to mention, the new jacket is a way better color, actually featuring his orange as opposed to skirting around it with reds and yellows like his old look did. It's not a huge change by any means, really just swapping him out of one hoodie into a better hoodie, but it feels more cohesively thought out. Toya's new outfit is basically an altered version of the gacha he had in the Break the Chain Kachika event, which clearly the Sekai team really liked from the start, seeing as how they routinely opted to put the kids into these clothes for multiple 3D MVs on their YouTube channel long after this event. And I absolutely see why. The jacket turtleneck necklace combo does a great job mixing the vibes of Toya's passion for street music and his history with classical music visually. His original design wasn't bad, but it never really seemed to convey any anything about his character. I'd often found myself thinking Toya felt more right in looks from the gachas, so it's great that his canon look actually reflects his personality now. I do sorta hate the torn white undershirt though. I'd say it's totally unnecessary for the silhouette and kinda messes up the good job they've done with everything else in the design. 
The look's not ruined by this by any means, but I do wish it was omitted. This Sekai has a lot of Vocaloids to look at, so let's not dilly-dally transitioning into them this time. Miku's new getup is certainly very cool, a dynamic silhouette, and I much prefer this green appearing on her over the weirdly loud blue of her old look. I am a bit distracted how much this feels like a costume. Like, I'm sure one could purchase all these articles of clothing, but it doesn't feel much like something one would actually wear anywhere other than a set. I also don't think I love this long jacket. While certainly adding to the dynamic vibe of the look, I think it's the main contributor to the costume effect I'm getting. It makes Miku look like she belongs in a cool sci-fi show. I think making the jacket either hip length or fully cropped short like the front would have fixed all my problems here. Mako has undergone a significant change, looking much less like the comfy coffee shop owner, and instead evoking, like, confident biker vibes. I think this is nice. While Mako was technically always part of the Sekai, she officially didn't join as a member who sings and dances until... I think the song Moonlight came out. This shift in style for her is like a magical girl transformation where she's out of retirement, back on the streets, ready to perform again. While I did like Mako's original look, this new color palette is much more cohesive and now they no longer need to fight with her jacket anymore. Having it draped over her shoulders looked cool, but was always going to be a nightmare to work with in actual motion. Not an issue for the new design. And finally, we've got Len. Len's original look had never really impressed me. This cruddy gray and blue palette is weirdly muted and down for no reason. The mix of a preppy shirt under all the streetwear never felt warranted for his character either. The silhouette is mushy, I just don't like this much. The new design feels like a much more successful iteration of what I think they were going for originally. The shorts and necktie make him look boyish and cute, while the jacket and belts scream, it's not a phase, mom. It's like he wants to be more involved with street fashion, but still has to look presentable enough to go to school. This shade of blue is also much nicer. No longer being trapped in these muted colors fits Len's loud, excitable personality much better if you ask me. Like I said, the squads had the best glow up. Even the virtual singers fared well during my critique. It's hard to point in a direction I'd like to see the kids go towards moving forward, as by all means they're hitting all the right marks already. I guess it'd be nice to see Kohane and Akito stretch their boundaries a little bit more. The artists have a clear vision they're aiming toward with On and Toya, while Kohane and Akito are more so just wearing cool new shirts. I'm looking forward to seeing that same strong direction come forward with them as their stories progress. People say I can't do what I love without college. I don't need no degree to be a clothing hanger. Next up is our beloved Circus Bunch, and I think Wonderland Showtime might be the least changed when it comes to these new designs, and I know that might sound ludicrous, like, look at how different the use of colors are across them, but I think the devil's in the details here, so let's actually get into those details. Tsukasa might be the most clear example of what I just said. He's really just still wearing the same Prince costume, it's just a little better put together. Shifting into this deeper blue makes him look a lot more royal and mature, and I think changing the little hip cape thing into a shoulder cape that people actually wear is a way better design choice. Overall, it also looks a lot more legit, like an actual prince outfit and not a crappy costume, most notably with the shoes and shirt matching and jacket and pants meant to go together and the smart vest tying it all up into a nice bow. Compare that to his old design, where the dark pants fly into the face of the jacket and shoes, making it look like the troop had to pair parts of his costume with pants he brought from home. The cravat also really overcomplicated his neck and shoulder area. Across the board, this is a much better iteration of the Pegasus Prince design. Despite the more complicated skirt, Emu's new design is quite a bit more cohesive than her old one, featuring basically the same silhouette but with a more narrowed focus on colors, opting out of all these greens, blues, and oranges to keep her in predominantly pinks with a yellow accent. Similar to Sakasa, Emu's old outfit felt like it was a mashup of different costumes that weren't intended to go together. Nothing on her really felt like it belonged with anything else. The more cohesive design here shows us how the kids are using their funds as ambassadors to to improve their stage and costuming. This shade of pink is also way nicer. It still matches her hair without being nearly as bright, making her much easier to look at. 
And now is where you can probably catch on to the general trend of Wonderlands. Looking to Nene, it's more of what we've discussed with the others. The same silhouette and more cohesive design makes it look less haphazard. I will concede that I think this version is a better design overall, but I did like Nene's original costume better. The sleeveless top, big bow in the back, frillier, wider skirt, and the knee-high leg warmers all just look real dang cute to me. This is, though, again, a better, more mature shade of green and smarter use of yellow and pink in the look. She's also always had buttons with faces on them, and it's nice that they're larger and easier to see now. Rui is part of the reason making this video took so long, because Homeboy decided to face away from camera like he's deliberately trying to piss me off. So I had to wait for the wiki to actually upload an image of his in-game version so I could really look at it. This might be a hot take, but I think it would be difficult for Rui's new design to look worse than his old one. The old pink and purple coat with the Nickelodeon slime green pattern across it is just ugly, I'm sorry. While his new design is still intentionally asymmetrical because he's quirky, it's done in a much more visual appealing way. Using the black and white to push that off-balance vibe keeps the look from feeling too noisy or unfocused, and ditching the pink to instead utilize multiple shades of violet to indigo coexists much better with his persistent greens. For the first time so far, Miku actually follows the same trends as the team, with her new design being a better, well-put-together version of her old one. Same silhouette, same general color palette, but with less vibrant shades to make it easier on the eyes. There's a part of me that'll miss the crazy puffball collar on her old outfit. Even though it's way too much, it's pretty iconic if you ask me. But I think they've altered her cat ears and tail to be easier to read properly at a glance. Kaito, however... Look at the mask with my boy. A bit of an overreaction, but this is just so boring. The old mustache bow tie thing was a weird accessory, and it was goofy that his jacket and pants didn't match, and I gotta acknowledge that, much like the rest of the troop discussed, this does look more cohesive. But it's also so shapeless and frumpy, feeling more like jammies than a suit. I get the idea with the white, but I feel we've lost way too much color on him as well. I also think the blue being accented with pink was more visually exciting than just copying Tsukasa's blue and yellow palette here. And on top of it all, the top hat is dumb. It looks dumb, especially in 3D where it's as if it's gonna go flying off at any moment. Also, the shoes just don't match anything else in the design. Bad. I'm sorry. This might be my biggest disappointment with the new looks. So yeah, like I said at the beginning of the Wonderland Showtime section, it's all still pretty dang similar. The same silhouette shapes and general color palettes across the board, and I think it would be nice for, in the future, the troupe to actually get to really change up their costumes. We've now got their OG designs, but like better now, but everyone else in the game got new designs, and I don't want to just see the same ideas again next time for the Circus Kids. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Last, but certainly not least, is Nightcore 25. Much like Wonderland's, Nightcore also hasn't changed too much here. I've always thought the group looked great, really standing out and feeling unique when all the teams are put together. And I'm glad that it's still true with the new wave of designs. But also similar to Wonderland's, I find myself hoping we'll get some more big changes with the team next time. Starting the detailed breakdown with Kanade, I am so happy she's not sitting down anymore. Her PNG was always difficult to work with because of it. This is much better. I also think this new dress is so pretty. Changing out of the large hoodie makes Kanade feel more physically capable, which coincides with how she does go out and do more as she helps her friends. Kanade also shows off the two big features that we'll see across the team. First off is the overall dulling of colors. What was once a bright red element on her hoodie has been become nearly brown in the new design. The second is use of flowers in the look. Nightcourt has been connected to flower imagery for quite a while now. Unfortunately, I'm not well versed enough with botany to be able to identify the different flowers to explain any interesting flower language symbolism that might be going on here. If anyone leaves a comment enlightening me though, I'll be sure to pin it. But yeah, Kanade really looks like she's opening up and living a healthier life here, which is delightful. Mifuyu is another one that I needed to wait to get a good look at here, which is nice enough because it means I get to see how asymmetrical the design is now, which is fascinating, but we won't get into that until we get to Miku's design. For now, I also want to mention that this black bow is a far more fitting accessory than the orange hair tie, and that her new shoes fucking slap. These are the best shoes of the game right here. They're so cute. It's also great to see the 
the color white begin to be incorporated into her design, implying the darkness is fading to a degree. While I think being a bit boring was the point for her Depression-era dress, I do like how visually interesting this new one is a lot more. I don't have as many compliments for Enna, unfortunately. It's not a bad look for her, I like the neck and sleeves of the dress especially, and the smarter incorporation of lighter greys is just as nice here as it is on Mafuyu. The cut of the dress is also much more flattering for her, it's just... This is just a different black dress, and I kinda liked the frilly petticoat and socks of the old one better. Unlike her two teammates discussed so far, we're not getting any quiet characterization with Enna's new design. Again, it's not bad, it's just... nothing much to say. Mizuki has always played a very important role visually for the group, being the brightest and clearly happiest looking one to help offset all their Debbie Downer friends, which might be why their new design disappoints me the most for the group. The longer sleeves and tights hides them in this gloomy gray color. We've also lost the fun of their old pinstriped Lolita skirt with all of its ruffles and bows to instead have Mizuki stuck in just an A-line skirt and the bright pink and red ribbons have been replaced as well. We've even lost the fun card theme in their buttons, where they used to resemble the four suits of a deck. It's just a bummeroni, if you ask me. It's like Mizuki's gotten more depressed over the three years. We've got just the one Vocaloid to discuss here, but that's okay. I think the Empty Sekai's virtual singers have always been the most interesting, and we can use Miku as an example for that discussion. Empty Sekai's virtual singers are all designed asymmetrically. As we can see with Miku only having one sock, the heterochromia and her pigtails are uneven. And what's so interesting about that is Miku's new look is much more symmetrical. With matching bows, both socks and shoes, the clock-themed element around her shoulders almost seems to emphasize this. And I think that's all interesting because that asymmetry has always felt like a representation of Mafuyu feeling unbalanced. And to see Miku become more put together feels like a visual of Mafuyu's mental health improving. I think the only real problem is that that sentiment doesn't really seem consistent here. Miku is symmetrical now, but Mafuyu isn't. The kids have also lost a ton of color too, with Mafuyu completely losing her blue accent. So while the added white feels like the darkness receding, they're also losing their color too, which feels like getting more sad. I get that I may just be interpreting the designs in a way the creators didn't intend, but I do hope that next time the kids not only get a more interesting shift, much like how I wanted for Wonderlands, but also that these sorts of themes and ideas feel more consistent as well. Are we getting brighter or are we losing our color? I don't think we can have both. Hey. How you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. I lied, I'm dying inside. And that's all of them. I think an interesting thing to note is how across all the teams, they've clearly wanted to use predominantly white and black with small accents of color. On one hand, this is really smart. Not only because this has the kids resemble the Vocaloid's original designs a lot more, which isn't necessary, but it certainly doesn't hurt, especially from a marketing standpoint. But moreover, it means the characters consistently look cohesive together. While I don't think any pairing within a group looked bad together previously, now you're basically guaranteed a more conducive aesthetic no matter who sings together. And even when fiddling with combos across teams, the kids look like they go well together now. On the other hand, I do find myself a bit disappointed that that homogeneity comes at the cost of aesthetic diversity to a degree. Clearly the street kids and the idols don't match or anything, but the previous designs did make it look like the kids clearly represented different genres of music and overall tone. These are the quirky circus kids, those ones are the sad team, and these are the k band types, etc. And while I don't think those clear divergences are totally lost by any means, they are more subtle. Which which again just disappoints me a bit. I know I already talked about how I'm the least happy with Mormor Jump's new uniforms due to the color choices, but I also think it's worth noting that I find Wonderland Showtime also a bit of a low point, personally. This predominance of white and black hurt them the most, in my opinion. Them being colorful was sort of the point, and scrubbing out so much of that color leaves them looking a little bit like... Just quirky idols, you know? But overall, I do think these new designs are good and successful in what the designers seem to have wanted. I may be a bit disappointed with elements of them, but other than Kaito, I don't think I could outright say I dislike any of them. It's great to get to see the designs grow alongside the characters as these stories progress, and I'm dumb excited to see what they do with them next. So don't be afraid to share your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you next time.
Let me ask you a very fair question. What do you do successfully? Quickly. Yes. <laughs> Whoa!